Aquafina, hello. Hello. Um, can you tell me about the experience of playing Billy in The Farewell and what was it like when you first read the role? What did you think of it? Um, I think my my approach to it was really driven by, like, relatability to, to it. I think um, I drew a lot from my own experiences going back to, you know, China or Korea to see my family. And um, and then I and also when I read the role, I, I think, um, you know, she she's she's, go, you know, her she's going through s stuff that she's not necessarily talking about all the time. And I think that that was a big thing for me. Like she's not really going to get to a point. She will at some point tell like bear all but like right now she's just going through stuff so that yeah it's interesting isn't it because you see her in two different modes because you see her at home in new york and there's a bit in in the street where someone talks to her and she's on the phone and she's mm -hmm. kind of irreverent and quite um i don't know devil may care but then you see her at this portion of the story where she goes to visit her family in china and she's really kind of like there's a pressure to be a certain version of herself that pleases her family, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, for sure. And I think that there's a kind of face that you put on with your family yeah. when you're when you're all kind of as a group going through a devastating event, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And did you feel, because it's, it's Lulu Wang, isn't it, the director? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And her, is it's autobiographical. Yeah. Did you feel like you had to you had to emulate her, or or in any way kind of, or did you was it just a more a version of you? I think it was it was definitely. I mean, you know, with with, the, with that specific role, Lulu wasn't very like you need to sound like me, you need to do this, and yeah. and also like you know, with, with, in your case, like it wasn't an already kind of like this established public figure where you know, it's um, but like the character of Billy itself just kind of turned into something that we both built and she really trusted me to like kind of my input and things like that. Yeah. But for you, did you like feel like that pressure like to... I, I think I felt the pressure, but I think we we made a creative decision quite early on to not be overly pegged down by it mm. because we were, you know, the, the movie Rocketman exists in reality that isn't isn't quite like ours. There are these fantastical strange things where you know, characters float and sing underwater and all sorts of weird things. But we didn't want it to, we didn't want to get bogged down in an impersonation. And yeah, that it, it, it just didn't feel like it fitted tonally with what we were doing. It, it's sure. the story's told from a, a rehab clinic, a therapy yeah. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's quite, it's quite personal and exposed. And the sort of, the sort of logic we were working on was that the more we can, the more of me we can get in there and the more exposed it feels. Yeah. And more, the more inside out it feels rather than outside in, which I suppose is what something that would be more impressionistic is. Yeah, yeah. The more interesting it would be. That's what we hoped anyway. Yeah, I, I, I know, yeah, for, for sure. And I think that like one of the most powerful things about it is the real emotion and the real, like those moments come, you know, through like expressions and then also like singing. So it's like almost like his mind you know, yeah, it's like the camera it moves and all that. Like, was that challenging to like? I found the experience of um, the DOP and his incredibly creative work, George Richmond. I yeah, love. He's and amazing. He's, he's yeah. amazing. And yeah. we've done a few things together. The acting through song, I really relished as a challenge. It was one of the things that yeah. I always enjoyed most about the film and that sort of type of storytelling. Mm -hmm. That challenge of how do you take these well-known lyrics, Bernie Taupin's bits of poetry, and tailor them to tell the story of, sure. the, of the movie. That always felt like a really exciting challenge. And, and giving them new meaning. and like giving, Totally. Yeah. So, you know, there's a bit where Jamie Bell's character sings to me, when are you going to come down? When are you going to mm -hmm. land? And it's from Yellow Brick Road, but it takes on new meaning when someone is saying it as if, you know, when are you going to sort your life out because yeah. you are at your lowest there? But you've been involved with music since you were super young. And does that, do you feel that that's, that, exp that experience of making music filters into your acting? Um, I mean, I think, I, think everything, I think everything comes from a certain place. Like if you, if you want, if you are, dr are drawn toward creativity, I think that there's, it's kind of a, a, an orb within you that, that can- It's all go. expression. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's expression. I think um, 
I, I don't I don't think that it it, it, it helps like uh, specific things because I wouldn't I don't think technically I could do like what you what you do. Do you sing? Um, not well. You know, I'll do I'll do my way at karaoke. You nice. Know? Yeah. I've done the same thing. Yeah, you do my way. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. done my way myself. Yeah, yeah. It always feels like the good end of the night. <laughs> yeah. Big finish. Wonder karaoke is the song. Best. Yeah. Wonderwall's good too. You gotta finish yeah. Wonderwall. You know. Wonderwall's good too. Yeah. Do you think you'd like to do a musical? Um, I, I don't I don't know if I'll be invited to do one anytime soon. But I'm um, not sure about I, that. <laughs> I'm sure you, uh, I, you know, I, I I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not against it. I, it, it just like I, I was. I was watching Rocket Man, and I was just thinking like, this is hard, you know, because it's like, it's it's like a music video. All of these crazy music, like the craziest music, it tied into a movie, and it's like, you know, was that different? Is that do you think that kind of acting is different? Like what you were saying? I think, as you were saying about that orb of creativity, I really believe that whether it be. I mean, I'm about to talk about painting and I'm not a painter, no. <laughs> but, I mean, but I also feel, I just feel that all those different types of creativity kind of stem from one place. And yeah. that feeling of, that feeling where you're, where you were performing and you, you just click into that mode and it all feels like it's working. Yeah. My experience of it in acting and in singing and when I was a kid being creative in other ways with drawing and making things, it all kind of feels the same, and yeah. it fe- and and so I think as long as you feel like you're in that place where you are free, yeah, um, and and there's a and there's a great joy in it as well. I think, yeah, you're probably onto a winner. But um, but no, the the I suppose if I was doing kind of pop singing on a stage, then it would feel like something very removed and different. But actually. Sure. The acting through song. It's very intimate. It, it can get like very like direct. It's, yeah, yeah, like, you know, so much of the film plays this near to my face because it's this guy recounting his life from from the rehab clinic. But yeah. um, but no, I feel like they're all much of the same thing. Yeah. 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 So like when you were looking into Elton John's music mm. and his kind of like lifelong relationship with music, what, what did you find? I... It's a really, playing Elton John is an interesting thing because although he is a creative genius, he kind of only, he is only able to do what he does with this, this lyricist, this poet, Bernie Taupin, mm-hmm. who's the other central yeah. figure in the Who's film. incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie yeah. Bell's he's incredible. All, Jamie Bell's amazing in it yeah. and he's portraying an amazing guy. Um, so there's this wonderful kind of, they're, they're two sides of a coin and it kind of creates a symbiotic relationship where they kind of really need each other not only creatively, but emotionally. Yeah. In terms of the music, you know, it's, I mean, the music feels like, the music of Elton John feels like it's been a part of my life forever. I think, yeah. I mean, I guess a lot of people feel that way. Um, but when I was very, very young, you know, I think the first time I remember being aware of him was probably The Lion King, because I was like six when it yeah, came out. Yeah. So I was right in that sweet spot. Yep. And then 2002, there were Greatest Hits, um, a Greatest Hits album that came out. And then I actually, when I was 17, when I auditioned for drama school, my performance through song audition piece was your song. What? Which is weird. That's it's weird. a weird, spooky little bit of, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did yeah. you work with, with Elton John at all? Like, do, like with the... Yeah, I mean, bef- before we started, he really, both he and David, who um, produced the film, really allowed me into their life. And I went and stayed with them. And wow. Elton gave me the first... Diamond ring he ever, diamond earring he ever bought, which I wear in the film in all the therapy wow. room and stuff. I know I've that's been really so lucky. That's so cool. That's all, that's amazing. It's been an, a really weird experience of playing someone and getting to know them quite well. Oh no! Would you make it out to uh, Arthur? He's uh, one of the blokes from work. Yeah, he, he's a big fan. Is he? Mm-hmm. So within the space of a year, you had Ocean's 8 come out, Crazy Rich Asians, and also The Farewell premiered at Sundance. That's a pretty, that's a, that's a crazy year. Yeah. How's it been? Um, it's, it's, been it's been good. It's been good. Um, you know, I, 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 I think for those two movies, I feel, I feel like for a while I was just in production. You yeah. know, I was, and I didn't really, I never really experienced like, the release of a movie, and then um, Ocean's Eight and Crazy Rich Asians really came out around like like within a couple months of each other, um, which was really cool. And then 
you know, the farewell, which was very, very different, you know, um, it, uh, it, it, yeah, it, Sundance was, it was, it's, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Was a movie career always on the horizon for you or was, is it something that kind of happened? Did it feel like? It was, I was never, a, I, it was never a plan. No. You know, I, I, I think I started at a time where, you know, I really had nothing to lose. I was, you know, this lost 20 something year old in, in New York and I put a video on YouTube and it was like the biggest thing that, you know, that I ever probably did in my life. Like the biggest risk I ever took. But in terms of a roadmap, there oh, like a music video. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. it the one that I think it is? Yeah, yeah. yeah right, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. My, you, you my say badge. It. Yeah. It's easier if you say it. Yeah, I think. PBS. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, super yeah. funny. Well, what about for you? Did you always did, like? Did you want to go into theater or, or act? Like? I, I mean, I before I was about fifteen, it had never occurred to me, and I did a play. So I'm from West Wales. It's you know, five hours drive from London. It's really, oh, wow. really super rural. But it's a sort of town hours away from anywhere else. So it never really felt like I was a, f a film career. It was mm -hmm. never on the cards, you know. No yeah. one else in my family had ever been involved with acting. But through boredom more than anything, I joined this local community theatre. Oh, cool. Thinking it would be fun and I'd meet people. And I had a couple of friends who did it. And then we would we did a the first production we did was a Midsummer Night's Dream, which is oh, cool. the Shakespeare the sh play. Yeah. And I Michelle Pfeiffer was in the movie. Michelle Pfeiffer was in the movie. Yeah, I played flute. Who? Oh, cool! Is the guy who has to dress up as a woman at the end. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I would relish the opportunity. <laughs> Fifteen. Yeah. The anxiety it caused me for weeks and weeks and weeks as a sort of chubby kind of you know. Pubescent, fifteen-year-old. <laughs> but when we did it, I had to wear this little—I mean, I look super cute. Yeah, yeah. Little red cocktail dress <laughs> oh, man. and like a wreath of flowers around my head. And I just remember walking onto stage and um, and everyone laughing. But it was like really nice laughter. It yeah. felt super supportive, supportive and encouraging. Yeah. And I and I just knew at that moment, you know, that even that night I went home said to my mum, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to be an actor. So that's where it started, really. Yeah. But so it was, so how old were you were the first time that it crossed your mind, the idea of being an actor? Um, uh, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I was really only used to, like, being on camera in, like, a music video sense. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't really know how to, I didn't, I'd never broken that wall in terms of just talking or anything. It was always just in the context of a music video. And then eventually, like, I started to, to do like other stuff where I was just talking and I remember like I might suck at this so you know I don't know but then yeah and then and then a couple of years later I was asked uh by Seth Rogen and Nick Stoller to audition for Neighbors 2 so yes. it was like my my first audition pretty much and um and I and I remember really liking it I thought you know it's it's cool to it, to do that but I I never pl really planned on it you know yeah yeah does it feel like performance in a music video is more, because I suppose by virtue of the fact that you're writing it all and it's your expression, it comes from a very honest place. So it still feels, which does it feel, does it feel like there's a crossover with acting? Yeah, I think, I think so. And I think that we're, whenever we're, in, we're, whenever you're in front of the camera, you're always acting to a certain degree. I yeah, mean, you, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think that it does, but I think what it, what it really, prepared me for because for a long time I was just playing shows you know and like like alone like I would go like I played like a bunch of shows in like Tacoma Washington and I think like it, it would like it kind of prepared me to like deal with like people and to like be on a stage and I and it was interesting because I was talking to some someone about theater and how like it's it's a different relationship with like performing than acting on a, for a movie yeah. Because on a movie set, things are relatively all kind of moving parts and they're all kind of going. But in theater, it's like really just in you and, and them. Well, the audience are part of the performance, yeah, aren't like they, by you, virtue of the fact they're there, I suppose. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And so that it affects it. I don't know. I, yeah. That sounds cool. I don't understand. She doesn't have a lot of time left. She should know, right? There's nothing they can do. So everyone decided it's better not to tell her. Why is that better? Chinese people have saying, when people get cancer, they die.
Um, so are you like aware of like the buzz about you on, do you, can you monitor your social media? And yeah, st- I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange thing, isn't it? Because I feel like the Instagram thing, there's such an important tool now, f- you know, the, the, yeah. the kind of the landscape of the way the industry works, but it's an odd thing because you, it promotes an interaction with people who can be quite passionate about you and your work. And that's, I think it's quite a dangerous thing because it's quite, you can be in danger of thinking that, uh, you know, a relatively microcosmic group of people who are passionate about you are, I think you've got to check yourself a lot. Oh yeah, you, Do you know sure. what I mean? Because there's a danger with Instagram that you can, you know. The, it, it can feed into The like, negative elements of you. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I think for, for sure. You can, you can, it can feed into the negative, like it's, yeah. And and also, do you, I mean, like, do you do you do you do you, do you Google yourself? No, I don't. I know. N- no, like I I really try not to because it never ends well. You know what I mean? No, I ha- I mean, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't. But I I've never done it and been glad I've done it. Do you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. What good can come of it? Because then you end up on just some random Reddit page. Just you know, awful, awful. That's just yeah. No, uh, you know that or or sometimes you find an old video and you're like, oh, look at that. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Videos of myself when I'm 24, 25, and they're like the first interviews I've done. Yeah. And I'm so overexcited and so giddy, and it's just, and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all really, really, <laughs> yeah, really it's, awful. It's, it's, hard to, it's hard to hear yourself talking. Yeah, and yeah. I think what's weird now as well is, you know, there's such a, a record of who you are the whole way through your I life, know. and it's like, you can't forget about anything. It's, all, it's you always can't like, pre- no, I didn't, yeah. you know? Well, and YouTube then it's like, says well, otherwise. Clip, yeah. Um, yeah, no, there's a whole, I mean, you know, they're, they're like, I think at the end of the day though, we're human. And like I said, it, it feeds into the negative parts of, of you. It could, right? Yeah. And, and it can also, I think, um, it could also like, you can start believing things, yeah. you know, that, that in a, in a healthy, constructive criticism way is fine, but then, if you keep doing it too much on both sides, it's it'll never end well. Yeah. At its best, I think it's when you have things, creative output that you're passionate and excited about. Yeah. It gives you a, a, a main line to share it with people yeah. who really will care, and I think that's that's the that's the best side of it. Yeah. For um, sure. And, and you know, yeah. yeah. It's lovely when people say nice things, but it can it can be a lot. As yeah. Well. I yeah. update my Zanga all the time. See, yeah. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're not on MySpace. Oh no! You, no, you I, no, I've no, I've never been on MySpace. Uh, I do Instagram, and yeah. I've got a Twitter account. But well, I, I update my MySpace pretty, pretty uh, frequently. Is that more? Is that more from a musician perspective? Is it a better platform for that kind of thing? I, I've had, I haven't had MySpace since like 2004, but um, it, it was a thing. It was a thing. Oh, so you're joking? <laughs> yeah, I was joking. The whole, it, it didn't. Forget it. No, it's okay. No, it's uh I'll I'll introduce you to it later. It's um sure, it was sure. fun. It was really good in like 2002. I discovered a lot of emo bands. Right. Did yeah. you were you ever an emo kid? Not really. No. I okay. I was like I was I always felt like I was kind of a bit I don't know like I was born in the wrong time. So the things I got really jazzed about in my teens were like the Temptations and the Four Tops yeah. and you There's know the Beatles and yeah. Otis yeah. Redding. Yeah. More yeah. contemporary music kind of arrived later, but um it's weird. It was really uncool then, but the older you get, the cooler it becomes that you like stuff that oh, was yeah. from before you were born. For sure. Where do you live? Uh, I'm in New York. New York. I always want to visit New York. It's a very beautiful city. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Uh, question. Do you know about my grandma's condition? You must show this shy. Oh, oh, no, no. She's in English, so she's in English. So the, it's, it's an intense journey, an intense emotional journey that your character goes on and it felt like you were super immersed in it and that it was a very personal story for you. Yeah. Do you feel, what does that feel like when you're doing it and how is the process of coming down from it and what, what's that like? So this essentially was my first dramatic role. I, I you know, the, my, my past movies were mainly comedies. Yeah. And so um, when, when approaching it, reading it, um, there were things that I was unsure of what I could do, but then there were things that I was very sure. I knew that I could understand what she was going through, and I think that that was the the, the initial thing. But then I think when I was there, it, it it opened up this whole other level, 
you know, they say like when you get into your costume and you get into the character, you there's a part of you that really becomes that person. And yeah. it wasn't until I was in China against the backdrop of like, you know, the town where Lulu's family is really from. And um, it, it is it, it is quite an emotional journey that was hard to strip off when I got home. You know, like when I got home at night, it was still with me. Yeah. And um, I, I remember ha thinking that I would have trouble just in a very shallow, like on the surface way that like I wouldn't be able to cry on command. Like it just, I was looking at it at such in such a technical way um, without realizing that it really is the moment and and um so that, was that, that a surprise for you you felt you'd have to generate it but it just kind of came it, it, it yeah and and when and when it when it came it was it was surprising to me because i i remember feeling um just just really really being being really in the moment which yeah. which you know and um but yeah I, I i think you know and the same could be said for for your for your character as well who, i think that thing that you're talking about for me the times where I've had to do that, the times where I've known on set that I'm generating it, whenever I've watched it back, I just never buy it. And that thing where it surprises you, as yeah. you said, of your performance, I think that, that, that the times where that's happened to me, I think is where it feels, yeah. you know, like, because I think it's that thing, I remember them saying to me at drama school, you know, that you shouldn't be, when that happens, it should. It's more, always more interesting to watch someone try not to cry mm -hmm. than try to cry. Mm. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, it's interesting because it, 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 that movie. One of the things I wanted to ask you about it is there's a really there's an amazing scene, and the gentleman who plays your uncle is mm -hmm. really quite amazing. He's really amazing. extraordinary. Yes. But there's a really interesting scene because your character is carrying some guilt about not engaging with your grandmother about what's happening to her. Yeah. And you pose this question from quite a, I suppose, quite a Western perspective yeah. because it feels strange not to tell somebody that they're not well and your the, your, the uncle gets quite emotional about it and, you know, about, and saying that, you know, this, it's, a dif it's a different world here and sure. it's a different attitude. But I'm interested in what your perspective as an actor is on that. And where you kind of landed, because that, I mean, a lot of the movie poses that question yeah. about whether it's whether it's it's okay to, because it's because it's a beautiful sentiment that idea of almost absorbing the 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 burden of it, yeah, of knowing someone's dying. But where did you land on that? I think I think at first I was very much west the Western perspective of of it because we we're taught certain we we have various beliefs instilled in us that revolve around privacy and like there there are issues with that when it comes to like not sharing. Mm. And here we look at it in, in a very specific way. And I think that everyone, everyone feels that it's their right to know about, about it. And, um, it's funny because my, my grandma who's, who's Chinese, I was watching it with her and, uh, my aunt is, is not Chinese. And she basically was like, have you heard of this? Like, this is crazy. And my grandma was like, duh, like, really? this is like, of course, like, this is like, this is what we do. You know, and she was like very much. Um, so it is. It is a common, a common practice. So would um, she have wanted that? Would she want then, that for herself? But or? then I asked her, like, do you want do you want that for you? And she's like, no. Like well, yeah. you know, there's no way. But um, it wasn't really until that scene with the uncle that, and I and I'd read the scene and I knew what the scene was. But it wasn't until like we were there and he was really like kind of hammering it in that I I realized that it, it is, it, it's 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 um a form of care, like in, 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 in that, in, in that culture. And, you know, in the, on the other, the flip side, it's a way that they find, um, to protect someone that they love, yes. um, from feeling that. And so I, I, I can't say if like, if my opinion has changed, but I can say that I understand very fluidly where both well, this is not a definitive answer, I guess, is there? It's such a, it's a yeah. really, it's a, it's a gray thing. It's, it's, a gray it's totally thing. gray. And I think it's just, it's just one of those things that it's, um, it's when quite... it comes to the surface in different contexts, yeah. you don't really know how to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like things worked out really well second time around, Dad. Yeah, I suppose they have. Mm. Did you know not everybody gets a second chance? I love meeting a real life pop star. Sure. So tell me about working with The Rock in Jumanji. He's the 
biggest star in the world, arguably. How was that? Oh man, he he's amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's like the ni the nicest guy. Um, yeah, I, I loved hanging out. Yeah, it was great. Is there an element of action that you had to perform in that as well? Yeah, there were there were certain elements. Yeah. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. I I I I I, I, I yeah, I enjoy that stuff. You know, it's, it's super technical, isn't it? It it is, but but you were doing some super technical stuff in in the Kingsman. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of um, great people doing great work to help make me look good in that. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I'm not sure that I could build a career around it like The Rock, <laughs> but um, I suppose by virtue of the fact that it was the first movie role I had, people have that association of me, um, and I enjoy I enjoy it, but it never felt. It never felt like home for me, I suppose, the world yeah. of action, you know, but... Uh, Were you ever able to keep your harness? Keep my harness? I mean, I should have kept my harness. Because the, they're, by, fit, they're fit for you. They're fit for you, and by the time you spend three months in them, they don't <laughs> smell great, so I don't think anyone else would want to wear it, but um, no, no. I really wish I could have kept mine, because that would have been so cool, just sneak, did, sneak up on people. What did you have to use your harness for? Just like, like, um, like, just being... <laughs> you know, hoist it up yeah. in the hoist yeah, it up yeah. in the air, basically. I would love to stuff. have a home hoist rig, yeah. where I can just lower myself down. <laughs> maybe not in other people's houses, <laughs> but you know, maybe my, maybe like you know, just as a trick. Yeah. You know? so, so, was there any were there any performances or films you saw growing up that inspired you to a point that made you want to become an actor? Um. I yeah. I I was obsessed with movie when yeah when I was young I was I loved League of Their Own it was like the first movie I remember seeing well that I watched Girls in the Mist apparently every day and I, couldn't, oh, really? and I like would would cry for it like when it wasn't on yeah. I'd be like get that get that gorilla movie on um and so I loved League of Their Own I loved my cousin Vinny I loved um the Bone Collector with Angelina Jolie I don't know why I just said that um and uh yeah I loved an assortment of of uh, but you know, movies were my escape for sure. You know, what, what, like what were some of yours? I don't know. I liked a, a mixture of things, you know, things that are kind of more. I don't know. I always loved anything with Michael Caine in growing oh, yeah, up. Yeah. Um, I suppose because with Michael Caine, he always felt like somebody who had. It all, you know, it felt like he'd done it because he was, you know, he wasn't from a family of, you know, well-known actors and came from a background that, you know, would be probably more similar to mine in terms yeah, of, yeah, you sure. know, um, you know, being working class and, and coming from a working class family. Although I'm, you know, my family from the north of England and he's um, from the south in London. But, you know, man, it would be king and... Yeah. Zulu and you know those things kind of also I speaking of stuff that I loved when I was a kid I was obsessed with the Muppet Christmas Carol oh that's a good one I know right I think but that was probably Who's your favorite Muppet my favorite Muppet in that <laughs> but only that, in, in because he or she doesn't shine in other, <laughs> other Muppet movies. I mean, Miss Piggy's work really falters in other areas of her career. Oh, man. But, uh, no, don't tell her that. Yeah, don't, please don't tell don't Miss Piggy. Don't tell her that. Um, I love that because I love the music uh, in it as well. Yeah. There's a really melancholic song in it called The Love We Found, where a young Scrooge is breaking up with, you know, the love of his life. And, uh, and that I don't know, I remember that being one of the first times that I'd been really... You know those first times where you're a kid where you're like m not just entertained, you're moved? Yeah. And it's a weird place to be. Yeah. But weirdly, one of the first times I felt really moved was, was the song? Muppets Christmas Carol and that song. And I think that's probably partly where the, you know, the start of my kind of interest in performance through song and its capacity to, to make you feel things yeah. came, came from, maybe. Um, that's... That's yeah. a great. That's great. Uh, yeah, that's good. I, it doesn't feel like the coolest one. answer, but um, it is the truth. <laughs> yeah. No. That's yeah. That's. Uh, what's your favorite scary movie? See now, I lo I do love horror. Yeah, horror is great. I do love horror. I lo I mean, like, in, there seems to be so much that's great lately in recent years, yeah. like Ari Aster and yeah, Jordan Peele. Oh and, yeah. Um, I thought Us 
it was uh, amazing yes, earlier this year it, yeah, and really, was. really, really frightening and brilliant and um, and equally hereditary Midsommar. Yeah. Um, but like older, do you, are you a fan of like older horror as well? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, don't, don't, what's, what's that one with the girl in the red, in the red coat and she's, and she sees, and he's, he sees her everywhere. And then the other one, the mom's living upstairs. So they sound it's, like pretty classic. <laughs> they sound like they sound like pretty classic. I, I don't know. I don't know what. Have they you are. seen Scary Movie? <laughs> have you? Have you seen, what? What was that? Don't look now. Oh, don't look don't now. Don't look now. I haven't. I have. I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, it's. That's one worth watching. Well, yeah, it's 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 definitely worth watching. Yeah. Yeah. Do you watch Japanese horror? It's great as well. I've seen bits. I think. Yeah. yeah. Like the the ring, right? The ring, the ring was Japanese. The grudge. Yeah. The, gr- the grudge, the and grudge I saw. If it's the if it's the one that I'm thinking of, the grudge I saw. Juan, it's called Juan, and and and. I don't know that I've seen the original. I may have seen the remake, which could, would have come out in my mid teens. So where the, on the phone, the end of the phone, and there's that awful noise coming down the phone. It sounds like someone doing a clicking, like a click. It's like a click. It's a almost like click. a like like. Yeah, it's, oh, it's like, horrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, yeah, that, you're, that, you're scaring that, me. Yeah. I'm scared now. Um, she really had a grudge. Yeah, awful. Yeah. If, if you think about what a gr- how people hold grudges, this one really like yeah, like yeah. generational grudges. Couldn't bear the hatchet on that one.